Hey, good morning guys. I'm the Tech Prepper. I hope you guys are all doing well and I just want to thank you guys for the support on the channel. Uh, you guys are amazing. Um, I read every comment and appreciate every like and subscription. So uh, keep it up and uh, again, I'll be into your debt. Uh, we'll be having a giveaway here soon. I received a couple of radios uh, that I that I'm testing and I don't feel comfortable keeping them. Uh, but more on that on the next show. Um, so let's get started. I wanted to share with you my personal experience with ham radio and my journey to my recent general upgrade ticket. And everybody learns differently, but I just want to share what I did and what worked best for me. And feel free to take what you want um, and just ignore what wouldn't work for you. So I've been into the hobby now for about three years. And the way that I passed my first entry-level technician class license for ham radio was by buying a very inexpensive $30 Baofeng radio because I was not sure if I was going to enjoy the hobby. So very minimal investment. And I think I even spent another like 30 bucks on the cable. And then I spent $30 on Gordon West's technician um, study guide. So for less than $100, I was able to figure out whether or not I wanted to get in the hobby. And I was largely successful. I passed my technician class uh, exam uh, about three years ago. So why did I want to get into general? Uh, well, there were a few reasons. Um, or there is a YouTuber, Julian Oscar Hotel 8 Sierra Tango November, and he has an excellent channel called S Survival Tech Nord. And his big focus is operating in the field with minimal power, a QRP, and uh, basically trying to figure out what's the best setup to uh, deploy a station in the field, whether it's the antenna system, uh, power distribution, power management, radio. And I saw that and I thought, well, this is a great time for me to get hooked um, and bridge my love of the outdoors with amateur radio. So I had my technician class license and at that time, the radio that seemed to be the favorite QRP radio was the Yaesu FT817. Uh, this happens to be the 818ND, uh, it's the successor. Um, too bad for me, uh, the ICOM 705 just came out and that would have been the radio for me, but um, uh, this works just fine. So while I was studying for my, my general, um, I started one year ago. Okay, so that's an important data point. Um, I decided that I would push my technician class license operating capabilities to the limit on 10 meters. And I got into digital and I purchased um, the signal link USB modem. And uh, the bands were very spotty. Uh, 10 meters did open up for me in the summer and I was able to make a lot of contacts. But one thing I really learned was a lot of the information required for general because I spent so much time experimenting with uh, 10 meter HF. Uh, I built my own dipole antenna and I learned to use all the software, learned to use the features on the radio. So at that point, I think without even studying um, for the exam in partic particular, I think I was close to probably a high 60 pass rate. Uh, so again, going this route is not for everybody, but I knew that this is the direction I want to go. This was the radio I wanted to go with, and that was the mode of operation I wanted to do in the field. Uh, in terms of study aids, uh, I decided to go with the Gordon West. Um, actually, no, that's not true. This time around, I decided I wanted to go with the ARRL manual, and the reason for it is I really wanted to understand the material for my general and not simply pass the test through rote memorization. Um, this was a year ago, uh, actually just shy of a year ago. And uh, the lockdowns started back, I think in March and all the testing centers pretty much closed. And I basically put this on hold. Um, I revisited it some time later and uh, I found that the material in this was just too dense for me. It was a great uh, reference aid. It's a great um, academic uh, reference to have. Um, I'm happy I have it, but it, it just wasn't enough to help me pass the exam at the level that I needed to. So then I decided to give Gordon West a try because it worked for me in the technician class. And the problem I had with this one was uh, I was sort of memorizing the answers and did not like that. 
Um, so I put the whole studying on hold again, and then it wasn't until I think a month ago or maybe a few weeks ago where I asked, hey guys, what's the best way to study? And they recommended uh, hamstudy.org. And you guys are amazing. That more than anything, I mean, I had amassed all this information, but within seven days of studying one hour before work, one after, one hour after work, and taking a practice test um, after the end of each of those sessions, I went into it knowing all the information cold. So hamstudy.org does an amazing job. They've got a study mode that will assess your competence level in all the different sections and reinforce those throughout your entire uh, study session over several weeks or however long it takes. So I absolutely recommend hamstudy.org. And then the practice tests are also phenomenal. Um, there were only about five questions that I decided I just needed to go down the route of rote memorization. And I would like to think of them as magic numbers where if I saw them, that was the answer. Uh, I'll try to put them on the screen somewhere if I can remember which answers uh, or which questions I actually memorized because I just did not want to deal with the really complicated formulas. Um, in terms of formulas, uh, there were a few that I memorized cold the entire time and uh, was able to derive the answer every time. Uh, the first was just for basic power. So watts equals amps times volts. And then based on what I'm solving for, I can just use simple algebra to find the other variations of that formula. Same thing applied for uh, Ohm's law. I just memorized one of the versions and then was able to solve for it. And then between the two, I was able, again, use, using basic algebra to solve for anything. So I didn't use the whole circle scenario. I just learned two versions of um, each of those formulas. And then there were a couple of tables uh, that I did kind of commit to memory and now just won't go away. Uh, one is the, the DB uh, chart, and uh, the other one I think was just for the metric conversion from uh, um, milli all the way up through, through Pico. And uh, that also ended up taking me well over the, the finish line on uh, passing the test. So um, I want to give a big shout out to the Thunderbird Ham Radio Club. Uh, they were the ones who facilitated the event in a very safe way, given everything that's going on. Um, everybody was super helpful. And uh, I took the test, I think it was Wednesday of this evening. And my upgrade ticket posted Thursday. And the first thing I did was take my Yaesu FT818, hooked it up, uh, I went ahead and uh, adjusted my ATOS 25 antenna to 20 meters, tuned it with my Zoom uh, rig expert, and uh, jumped on FT8, and I made a contact within, I think, like just a few minutes. And the contact was 1,500 uh, miles away, 15.5, I think it was exactly, in uh, Indiana. And um, the bands were so open. They looked like the first time I did uh, Field Day 2020, and 10 meter band was open because obviously it was a contest. It looked just like that in the middle of the day in November. So the upgrade absolutely is worth every ounce of effort I put into it. So guys, let's talk about what's next for the channel. Um, I want to follow uh, Julian's page and uh, get out in the field and operate portables. So I purchased two things last night. One is a excellent NFED half wave antenna from Pactenna. Uh, thanks a lot, George. Um, I did pay for it, but uh, I, he did answer a few questions for me and uh, it looks like he's got some really quality gear on his end. And then uh, I went with the uh, Soda Beams, has a six meter carbon fiber um, mast. Uh, and I bought it mostly because I want to be able to really do man portable work. So there'll be a lot on that channel um, or on this channel. Uh, outside of that, I've got some really cool battery projects I want to do and a giveaway. I actually have a vendor that is sending me radios right now and I don't feel comfortable keeping the equipment. So after I do the review, I'm going to give that to you guys uh, as a big thank you. So if you can, um, feel free to share, like, subscribe, do all that good jazz. I'm the Tech Prepper. Be strong, be safe, and be prepared.